Tesla makes some pretty darn good cars, but somebody out there is sure to disagree, and I don't just mean Tesla Q. They're rabid and impossible to please, so everyone stop trying. No, this week we're discussing JD Power and their terrible, terrible business model. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> I am joined by uh, the good old Randy Kirk, who makes uh, videos, I'm told, for I have not once watched them. Uh, Sometimes we chat on Monday mornings, and uh, I end up on his channel. I don't know how that happens. I find it deeply unsettling, but it's a great channel, and you should check it out. It's about money, Brian. It's about money. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I'd like some of that. That's good. Uh, Speaking of which, you know, I I should mention that I do have uh, some ways to support my channel, Patreon, YouTube, X. You can be a patron, a channel member, or a X subscriber. You don't get much, but uh, you do keep me in business, which is what I'm here for. And uh, if you don't like those kinds of uh, recurring things, you can also just do a one-time payment on PayPal as a as a show of support. Every bit helps and I appreciate it. So there is this great story. And by great, I, of course, mean <laughs> terrible. EVs are giving new owners more headaches. And Tesla is a big reason why, according to JD Power. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, JD Power's highly watched initial quality study is out, and it appears EVs are giving consumers big headaches. They track responses from 100,000 purchases and lessees of 2024 vehicles within the first 90 days. We're looking at initial quality. And yeah, they've been doing this for 38 years, and it incorporates it incorporates repair visit data, but not exclusively. That's just one of the things. So Automakers have typically said EVs are less problematic, but, you know, owners of cutting edge tech filled EVs and hybrids are experiencing problems that are of a severity level high enough for them to take their new vehicle into the dealership at a rate three times higher than that of gas powered vehicles, which is very weird. Ram (laughs) has the fewest problems, but Dodge has the second most problems. Uh, Riddle me this what and yes. tesla and rivian yeah so this is pretty pretty bad but typically the de- gap between tesla's quality and that of legacy automakers has been wide with tesla score better than others but that disparity has narrowed uh, how many times did you take your car in in the first 90 days i've never taken my car to a service center okay so Four years, uh, three three and a half years old never been in a service center the only times i've had any service was when I had broken windows from being in a sandstorm in the great desert, the, uh, you know, and uh, some uh, tire problems because I ran over things that I shouldn't have run over. We've never had. Don't do that. Yeah. Never had a single, not one single problem with the Tesla in three and a half years. No. So here's a more honest look at it. JD power survey slams electric cars. It's the tech, stupid. (laughs) The survey statistics are presented in terms of the number of owner complaints, a lower PP100 score. That's a great name for it. Fewer problems reported with your PP. Ram vehicles had the lowest number of complaints. Uh, So let's see if you're reading this, you're probably not interested in the initial quality of a Ram. Chances are you're much more interested in what is happening with electric cars here. The news is not good. So the one problem that they're, that they have with their methodology is they count any complaint you have, right? including, I don't know how these new blinkers work. <laughs> right. <laughs> the problems had little to do with the mechanics of EVs, motors, batteries, and so forth, and almost entirely to do with the tech. Yeah. Yeah. I do have an idea. I have an idea. Yes. You know, I'm I have ideas. That's why you have me I, on the channel, right? It is, it is among the reasons, yes. Could possi- Is there any way possible that Tesla could change the entire category name? No longer actually allow anybody to call what Tesla is a car. It should be called a computer on wheels. And when I get a new computer or a new uh, smartphone, I expect 
to have problems. I, I just assume I'm going to have problems figuring it out. And I've been on computers since uh, computers started. Um, and yet I still expect to have problems when I get a new one. Uh, therefore, if we called it a computer on wheels or just called it a, I don't know, a drivable computer or something like that, then maybe people would, would treat it differently. So uh, could you do that? The answer is yes, except that Tesla can't. So vehicle oh. dependability improves despite continued problems with technology. In here, um, they, they cover some of their stuff. Following your key findings, infotainment systems. So if you have an infotainment system that people don't like, it counts uh, yes. almost as strongly as the motor died. Motor blowing up right now. <laughs> right, yeah, it's... <laughs> quite quite ridiculous. Uh, the highest ranked brands, Lexus, Genesis, Cadillac. Wow. Cadillac is not even a volume maker, but lowest Chevrolet, which is, of course, Cadillac's manufacturer. Yeah. Very, very weird. So what I did is uh, tried to dig into the difference. Why is it so bad? Why consumer reports and J.D. Powers are so different? Um, this points out the disparity between years and how their rating system is kind of all over the place. Uh, unless so it Ford slid once again in the rankings coming in at 27th out of 28 brands. Um, and the news also plays focus on Jaguar, which was at the bottom of the list for the second consecutive year. Wait a minute. I thought Jaguar had done well and it had done well in one of those studies it tied for the number two spot with Porsche just behind first place Lexus. Seems puzzling, doesn't it? Yeah. Less than, yeah. Toyota's youth brand, Scion, had terrible uh, results. It's a snapshot taken at a different period of time. So, I mean, we can't, we can't weigh them equally. But the big problem is, is this guy. This is going to shed some light. How they make money. J.D. Power makes money by selling its research findings and licensing fees. If you want to feature J.D. Power in an advertisement, mm. like those car commercials, mm. you have to pay a licensing fee. Now, I know somebody's going to pay that licensing fee, so let's give them a good rating. Otherwise, they won't use it. Right. Otherwise, they won't use exactly. it. It exactly. creates a distorted uh, system. Uh, because companies pay them, there are situations in which they're making money off the companies in its ranking. Yeah. The conflict of interest is something competitor Consumer Reports, who I also have issues with. It was fun. Consumer Reports, I think it was last year, gave Tesla its lowest score, but also its uh, best EV. So, yeah. Yeah. If it's the worst car, how can it be the best EV? You ranked other EVs. Fine fine yeah better business bureau why even mention them that's another pay-to-play company but all right and then let's oh and did you here. know that you know your local your local better business bureau is owned by a private individual they are oh. a franchise and so yeah. some of the franchises are well run and some of the franchises are extremely poorly run so wow. you're going to get a different different depending on which city you're in that is wild and it makes no sense. The trouble with J.D. Power's initial quality study uh, tells you less about vehicle defects than you might think. Um, and you, and by the way, what a beautiful chart, you clowns. Wow. Uh, whether you're a hardcore car enthusiast or you think of your vehicle as an appliance, you don't want problems. So what is the, uh, the company has been conducting? But how exactly is quality measured? You begin to wonder when you compare the 2011 IQS results with those from 2010 Mazda GMC. So let's look at this chart here where we see how much the rankings change each year and they can change dramatically wow. despite, despite most vehicles not being new vehicles most years. Yeah. And so the, there's so much noise in this data. You have to wonder we observed with, dismay as BMW in its newer models has been switching from its traditional stock based cruise control to buttons on the wheel. And we've been told that it's uh, changed to is to address IQS complaints. These initial quality surveys say, well, I don't like having this. I want it here. So they do that. You didn't make a better car. You just moved a button. And that's 
ridiculous. Porsche has struggled with brake pad choice because of the initial quality survey. The pads that deliver the best fade resistance and wet braking are the ones that generate more wheel soiling, you know, the brake dust. So people complain about brake dust that impacts your initial quality. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> These are really, really dumb. So this is, of course, um, you may have seen these bits of genius, the JD power award for, I guess the best car, but these are not good cars. Uh -huh. uh, so, and this guy green screens himself in to bring a dose of reality. And remember, these are not actors. These are real people who we paid to make this commercial. Right. That's uh, that's, that's the opposite of a real person. My friend, that is not what uh, real means to me. So well, very Brian, you know um as i mentioned uh you know i've been back playing with F in a previous v video we did together i've been back with fsd and doing a lot of driving on fsd and doing a little more driving than usual on my model y so i become you know when i do that all of a sudden the brain starts going because that's who i am i'm a product guy and i'm always looking for ways to make improvements well, turns out one of my complaints the other day, and, and, and these are really interesting, I, th I think, for the crowd out there. One of my complaints was about, you know, the um, nag on FSD and then, you know, having to like jiggle the wheel in order to get the nag to go away. And somebody goes, did you know that you can just wiggle the toggle switch on your steering wheel and it'll make the nag go away? It changed my life. A lot of other people, I don't think, know that either. Do you want to know what else you can do? You yeah. can wear sunglasses. Sunglasses. Wear sunglasses. Yes. If you wear sunglasses, it can't see your eyes and right. it assumes that you're so much less wheel nag. It's very frustrating. So does that mean I have initial quality complaints? Exactly. Well, well then there, I give you, let me give you another one. I, I think maybe you'll have some too. Maybe you've realized some of these things. But another one that really could change your life is using your voice. So I can never find the navigation. I can never find, I, I go, because, I, you know, I'm not on the thing enough. It's a computer. And I'm not on my computer enough to know how to navigate around on the computer to find navigation. Does that make sense? Did I say it that well? Barely. You said it right, but it doesn't make sense because I'm pretty sure it's on the screen all the time. No, no. But... You sometimes you can get it not on the screen. Believe me, I've done it. But you can go navigate to 65. You can say it out loud. And you don't have to go to the screen. Yes. Or navigate home and you don't have to go to the screen. Or increase the speed five miles an hour and you don't have to figure out how to increase the speed five. Change my life. Just about anything you can do in the car, you can do with a voice command. Um, you can turn up the heat, down the heat, defrost, defog, whatever you need to do. Bioweapon defense mode, all of it. Bioweapon. It's all. Oh. Yeah, yeah. The air filter when you're driving through a wildfire or skunk land. Um, I, in my entire 6,000 mile road trip, not once smelled a skunk, which I think is improbable in any that other car. Improbable. Yeah. Uh -huh. These are amazing vehicles and it's an amazing computer. And I'm going to guess because I haven't been in anybody else's car recently, you know, to see other computers, I'm going to guess that it has way 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 more levels way 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 more capability than any other car out there and what does that mean well then it's just like getting the newest latest greatest computer and having to find out where all those things are buried i mean you can even mm -hmm. watch videos on it and read books on it and have your friends tell you about it but until you're in it and trying to find the actual function it's a new computer all of those count towards jd powers absolutely ham-fisted approach and, and uh when they finally included tesla on their chart they said here's a, the best and worst cars ram worst okay i thought you said oh least complaints there we least go complaints. Yeah, yeah. but they didn't even properly rank these uh because uh they they won't give us their data they won't give us all of their consumer data so we don't know who actually bought cars give us your data tesla give us your data and that happened in a number of them. Right. Um, Tesla and, will not share data with them. Yeah. And this was, this is this year, but last year they scored the best, but they were not allowed to be on the list because 
well, you got to give us, you have to give us, you got to play by our rules. You got to give us money, give us data, give us something we can profit from, or we're not going to include you at all, which is of course, um, slimy and, and dishonest. And I just do not like it. By the way, this is the last time I will mention this one. You guys, this is a guy who, um, is a regular on the channel. He, uh, is not a sponsor. Um, but he said, Hey man, if you could mention that I have a shirt, um, I am wearing the shirt. He gave it to me in Michigan and he's a nice guy. So I will put the link in the description and remember kindness is always free. That's what the Highlander wants you to know. And yes, he was wearing a kilt at the Michigan takeover because it's his character, I guess. It's it's his. Yeah. yeah. There can only be one. Yeah. Um, be only one. I think I grammared it bad. So uh, guys, uh, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand the JD power study? Uh, we've finished the JD power hour. Farcical. Farcical. That's all I can say. Farcical. Yeah. It's cynical is what it is. It's so awful. I mean, are you telling me that if Tesla gave them a bunch of money, they wouldn't magically have the highest rankings across the board next year? Come on, get real. They would just tweak the, the, they'd say, you know what? We've been emphasizing too much on people whining about things that aren't broken. Because if you want me to complain, I mean, well, have you had any complaints with FSD? Sure. I've had a bunch of just, oh, that's a, that's an initial quality defect. Right. Guys, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? I'll leave it in the comments below. Uh, head on over to uh, the Randy Kirk channel. See what he's up to. He does some good work. I appreciate him. And uh, everybody else, uh, like, subscribe, do the usual, and stay tuned, stay juicy. And please remember that I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the next one.